Hey gang, it's Murray here from GoalieTrainingPro.com and so as I mentioned, if you're on uh, the insiders list, the, the email list, I mentioned it on there. I'm kind of doing a pre-camp or pre-season blitz this week and I'm going to do three of these um, live online workshops for you, um, but they're all going to be free. So um, today we're starting off with the science of stretching. And um, then on Thursday, we're going to talk about the aerobic deficit. And on Saturday, it's going to be um, the eccentric advantage. So what I want to talk about, and these are going to be a little bit more uh, sciencey, a little bit more in depth, because I want you to understand how it works and how you actually become a better goalie. It's not so, you know, almost giving you a glimpse of the things that I'm weighing checks and balances when I design your off ice training program. So it's not just a matter of, oh, this is, this is a goalie exercise or, um, you know, this will make them tired or this will be hard. It's, it's a matter of, okay, what's the science behind how our body takes and adapts to a stretched muscle. Um, why is it that a goalie um, hits their anaerobic threshold so much faster than a skater and then gets that fatigue really, really quickly? And it's, you know, your teammates bug you, oh, you just stand around, you know, how can it be hard? <laughs> Sometimes even you're thinking like, how am I this tired, you know? Um, like, and you guys know I'm the, the third worst goalie in the world, but you know, even in our in our shinny on Sunday mornings, like when the puck clears the zone, it's like, should I be dizzy right now? <laughs> like, um, because you, you're that tired. So, um, I'm gonna take you through the science of why that is and explain to you a bit how that fits into how you design your program. And then, you know, and then it's up to you if you want to try to piece it together and experiment on yourself. But, you know, some of you just play for fun, so you have a couple of years to play around and figure and see what's going to work for you. Some of you don't have that luxury of time. And so then, uh, that, you know, that's where I come in and programs like the shutout Academy, things like that. You can, you can just have me do the heavy lifting for you and just, all you have to do is follow the program. But, uh, speaking of shutout Academy, hi David, how are you? Um, so, um, we're going to talk about stretching and mobility today. And, I think a lot of you, because you email me and you say, I stretch, but I don't feel like I'm getting any improvement, or I feel like I get improvement when I stretch at home, I get further, or when I stretch at home, I can pretty much do the splits, but when I get on the ice, it's not there, I can't, I can't do it. Um, and uh, hi, Craig. And, um, or you even have like some of you are like, yeah, you know what? I, I decided to get really diligent about my flexibility. I started stretching. I stretch five or six days a week. Um, you know, even a lot of you will be like, and I took like some of what you do and some of what I've done before and I put it together myself, but now I find I'm getting more tweaks and more injuries when I stretch more. So, you know, then you think, oh, well, stretching is bad for me. It makes me get more injured, which is not true. It's just that you're not covering all the bases and you'll see from a little diagram in the back why that is and, and by the end of it we'll explain why that is. So I want you to think just for a second, you know, what do you think happens when you stretch a muscle? How do you think a muscle gets more flexible? So just in your mind, picture what is happening. I bet you a lot of you are picturing sort of a piece of silly putty uh, that, you know, you pull, 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 and it gets longer, and then it just stays longer because I pulled it, you know, if you think of your muscle like taffy. Well, your muscle isn't taffy, which is good because taffy isn't that springy. Your muscle has really kind of two elements. One is um, a little bit more of a plastic type element, and the other is more of an elastic type element. So we need to address both of those. And sometimes when we just do static stretching, we address that elastic element, but not so much uh, the plastic element. So it's not like silly putty. The other thing I wanna mention is that um, our body just adapts to the demands that we give it. So even if we stretch diligently, which might be 20 minutes, five days a week, six days a week, but then that we spend the rest of the day uh, sitting with crappy posture, um, standing with crappy posture, th you know, that is what our body 
processes and that's what our body adapts to so it doesn't say well you know what for 20 minutes though uh, this guy or this girl really really is working on their splits or really working on their hip internal rotation probably we should uh, add some more sarcomeres to that muscle uh, no it's saying you know what for uh, seven of the waking hours they were in you know this kind of posture we don't actually need those sarcomeres uh, we could cannibalize some of those and just because it costs it costs your body energy to maintain a sarcomere. And now I'm, you're looking at me. I can see your glazed looks. <laughs> like, what is, a sarco what is this sarcomere of which you speak? I'm going to bring you in here a little bit uh, and show you what a sarcomere is. So let's, let's make believe that um, this is a muscle fiber. So uh, this is called a Z-line. Bear with me. I actually think this stuff is exciting. Uh, and this is going to look backwards to you guys, which is going to be awesome. Uh, this is a Z line. This is a Z line. So one sarcomere unit is Z line to Z line. And within this sarcomere, there are filaments, there are thin filaments. Boy, this is terrible. And there are thick filaments. The thin filaments are called actin, the thick filaments are called myosin, and they actually make little cross bridges where they cont uh, contact one another. And when these little cross bridge heads swivel, uh, when they swivel, the muscle contracts. That is actually how your muscle contracts. So if you look up here, here I've got a big muscle. And um, these are meant to, to show myofibros, individual muscle fibers, but there'd be like thousands and thousands and thousands of them in there. So it's like if I cut out a little piece of one single muscle fiber and put it under an electron microscope, this is what it looks like. And it actually looks like that. Like it's very, very cool. Like you see a Z line and you see a Z line, which is cool too, because now I'm getting geeky. But if you wanna see like, you know when you get delayed onset muscle soreness, um, I actually wrote a paper on this in university in grad school and I got it published in the grad journal which is like the first thing I ever got published but anyway <laughs> um, when you have delayed onset muscle soreness if we did a radiograph of, of or radiograph um, uh, like a, a micro electron microscope of your muscle fibers we would see these Z lines kind of streaming they would kind of be smeary looking after that bout of exercise that left you with the delayed onset muscle soreness. So that's one of the markers, um, objective mar or subjective markers of um, delayed onset muscle soreness. So anyway, because there's a little bit of myofibril disruption. Where were we? <laughs> we were talking about sitting down and I'm going to bring you over here. We're going to go on a little field trip over to the bench. And I want to talk a little more about sitting so that you actually understand, because otherwise you're going to be like, yeah, 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 I know I'm not supposed to sit with shitty posture, but I do anyway, so there. Um, so if I sit, when I sit, so my hamstrings attach right on the bottom of my bum, right here, that bony prominence, my ischial tuberosity, and they attach uh, to the top of my shin bone, so they cross my knee here. So when I flex my knee, I've shortened my hamstrings. My hamstrings are in a shortened position. Well, if I sit here with my pelvis in neutral, they're shortened here, it's just kind of neutral here. But how many of you really sit like this? The majority of us sit like this. So we've tucked our pelvis underneath. So what have we done? We've taken that point and we've moved it forward. So we've shortened those hamstrings from both sides. Let's not even talk about what's going on with your abdominal muscles, your rectus abdominis. We're not even gonna talk about that. We're just gonna think about your hamstrings. So they're chronically in this shortened position. So again, your body just knows, hey, yeah, seven out of the 15 waking hours, these were in this shortened position. So we can make those shorter because this is the demands that we're putting on them. So how can we get around that? Well, it's, it's pretty simple. And I know some of you are gonna be, oh, well, I, I ride an airplane and I can't straighten my legs, whatever. Like, yeah, I get it. But when you can, you know, you can, you can minimize this by sitting up tall, so getting your pelvis underneath you so that you're actually sitting on your bum bones, not sitting on your sacrum or on your tailbone. So, so getting your pelvis up 
tall. And then you can also, you know, or at least when possible, straighten those legs out. So even if you're in school and you're at a desk, you can sit here, you can get tall, you can straighten your knees, so now your hamstrings are in a more lengthened position. You can also, it's really easy while you're sitting, you know, to just do even a little stretch. So I'm straightening that leg, I'm getting tall, and I'm just coming forward, and I feel the gentle stretch in the back of my thigh. So I can stretch that way. A lot of you make the mistake of, um, you know, rounding your back or thinking you're supposed to touch your toes when you stretch your hamstrings. So you'd be like, well, I can't do that if I'm in a board meeting or something, you know, a meeting at work or school. But really, you can just sit up tall, straighten that knee, you know, come forward, get a little stretch. But even by just chronically sitting with proper posture, and really, you know, you can learn a bad habit as well as you can learn a good habit. When you try, and I want you to actually try this, um, when you try doing it, you will fatigue. Your muscles in your back will get exhausted. Um, they'll be sore, they'll be stiff. You'll think, oh God, I can't do that. But just set a reminder. Anytime you're on email, anytime you check your mobile device, um, if you're driving in the car, anytime you're at a red light, fix your posture. And if you keep doing that repeatedly, those muscles will get stronger that'll hold you up. These will all lengthen out so that you're not fighting against yourself. And then that brings you back into a good neutral position and helps you not be so chronically shortened in your hamstrings and in your hip flexors. Because when you sit like that too, you're making your hip flexors tighter. When your hamstrings are tight and your hip flexors are tight, it's just uh, jamming that hip joint. And no wonder you can't move out there. So that's a biggie. You know, we're gonna talk about stretching but if you're just going around with crappy posture, reinforcing all the time that, you know, yeah, we can be short here and short here, that's what your body's going to adapt to. Cool? Are you with me so far? Everybody with me? Um, yeah, I started the butterfly challenge. Feels already loosening up a little bit. Awesome. You're welcome. From Hungary. Cool. Cool. I'd actually like to go visit Hungary someday. Maybe I could come stay at your house. <laughs> <laughs> we can talk later. <laughs> okay, so now we'll go back to this. This is backwards again because uh, I have the camera forward facing so I can see if I'm actually in the shot or like see what my hair looks like, you know. But um, it doesn't matter because there's not going to be a written test on this. It's just FYI. So, a couple things too, but to know about. Uh, <laughs> oh, good, I got a place to stand hungry. A couple things to know about um, flexibility training. We do strength training, power training, speed training. We can measure. You know, we're going to measure you now. We're going to do this intervention. We can measure you after, and we kind of know what the outcome is. Flexibility training is a, is a, we can do the same types of things, see if your movement is improving. But scientifically, it's really hard to study. It's hard to control all the variables, and it's also hard to see, well, did we actually make the muscle longer? Uh, you know, same with self myofascial release. Self myofascial release, like foam rolling, using lacrosse ball, um, people will be like, oh, that doesn't improve your mobility. It just improves your tolerance for pain, and that's why it feels better. But actually, like if you do the rolling the lacrosse ball on the bottom of your foot thing, you'll you'll find that it improves your forward bend by usually it's like two to four inches, uh, improving your forward bend without actually stretching any of those muscles. So it's one of those things that sometimes it's like we don't really know how, but it's magic <laughs> and uh, yeah and if it's not for you that's totally cool too I'm just gonna try and shed a little light on the science behind it so that so that you're not also not making the mistakes that some of you make when you start stretching but you don't include all the ingredients and then you end up uh, getting more injured more often which is like not at all what we want so now again we're gonna go back and do our science geek pal talk so um, this is a muscle let's say it is your biceps muscle. And um, so these are the fibers, and they run like that in the skeletal muscle. Wrapped within a muscle fibril, so this is like teeny tiny, like these would be, these would be like bundles of muscles called fascicles. Say each one of these would be a bundle of like, I don't know what, like 500 muscle myofibrils. Um, and then those um, fascicles are, are engulfed in fascia. And 
every little myofiber is wrapped in fascia and then this big whole muscle is wrapped in fascia and it's actually the fascia coming out the ends that really makes up the tendon that connective tissue uh, sheath so very very cool so that so fascia is like it's all in there <laughs> so anyway around an individual myofibril will be um, this type of um, sensory neuron that is called a muscle spindle so that to you looks backwards like alchemism <laughs> but it's a muscle spindle and it is sensitive to the rate of lengthening of a muscle so if it is so it's set to say hey you know what if this muscle is lengthening too fast then it's like it's like alert alert you got to stop because if you keep going at this rate you're going to tear this muscle really really badly so this blob is your spinal cord so these are spinal nerves it doesn't even go to your brain it's like you know when you touch something hot like when I leaned on the muffler with my thigh on my motorcycle last week and burned my thigh it like I didn't see it because my panniers were there and I leaned over and then it was like and I just like jumped right back or when you touch the like the hot pie comes out of the oven and you're a little kid and and without thinking it you jerk back that's a spinal reflex that's why it's so fast it doesn't even go to your brain it just goes right to the spinal cord at that level and your spinal cords like no way so same kind of thing happens this is like hey we are stretching way too fast this is dangerous so your spinal cord send a message back to that muscle contract so again sometimes this can actually cause your injury because you're um, sort of in that uncontrolled lengthening stretch um, this would be in a game like not just you're stretching on the floor but um, and then your muscle contracts but you're in a vulnerable position and you can uh, you can get a muscle tear that way but uh, which sucks but it's probably less of an injury than you would get if your body just lets you keep going so that is and that's called um, so that's a muscle spindle reflex and then also what happens is called a reciprocal inhibition so let's say this is this is my bicep so my biceps is lengthening really fast like it's being you know pulled or jerked and my body's like no 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 this is gonna be bad so contract but then it also reciprocal inhibition also makes my triceps relax a little bit because it doesn't want my triceps sort of pulling me into that uh, lengthening action so that's called reciprocal inhibition so it makes the agonist contract and the antagonist relax are you with me okay. <laughs> so spindles sensitive to speed that's all you need to know then there are these Golgi tendon organs and they are located more in the musculotendinous junction so out here where the muscle fiber starts to build into the tendon they are sensitive to the amount of force so the, if the amount of force is too great it sends a signal again to the spinal cord that's like this is way too much load uh, and then your spinal cord says yeah you're right we're gonna relax that muscle uh, it's too much we can't fight it um, it's it's too much force we're just gonna relax and let it go and sometimes you see that I used to like watching those world's strongest man competitions because sometimes you would just see that and they would like buckle kind of so that's called an autogenic inhibition it the muscle sort of inhibits itself because and again these are always protective mechanisms your brain is so smart it's trying to protect you I think that's all we need from the little picture um, so and we can't trick them their spinal reflexes so we can't override it or anything like that but what we can do is train the brain and the muscles to work together to be like no no you know what uh, this is actually safe for me because your body is thinking you know you've never been there before maybe somebody's like think of the first time you went to a big big city and you're walking around maybe you got a neighborhood that you're like oh I don't I'm not sure about this neighborhood I think I better backtrack out of here but then once you've been there a few times you're like no no this is fine like it's just yeah it's a little bit different whatever but totally safe totally cool it's the same thing for your muscles in your brain so it's like no 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 we've never been here before um, we gotta we gotta shut this down we gotta just go into full-on protection mode just clearing messages um, but then once you train it a little bit to be like no 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 this is safe this is okay and again it takes steps and steps in the proper sequence um, not just kind of trying to force it to understand um, 
then then we can actually use that mobility so uh tim that would be great i'd love yeah hopefully we can meet up i'm always at the net well I, my plan is always to be at the network goaltending symposium every single year because it's so awesome but yeah we'll definitely meet up um so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna i have notes here so i'm just checking that i've covered my notes yeah, so what I'm going to do now is we're going to go in the back gym and I'm going to walk you through sort of a little practical. I'm not going to keep you for hours and hours, probably have another 10 minutes, but I'm going to show you my thinking process as I put these things together in for like turning pro programs or shutout academy programs. So um, just a little snippet. So we'll take kind of one muscle group and I'll sort of show you how I apply it. So we're going to go on another little field trip. Going through the lobby here. Mm -hmm. Into the gym. Ba -ba. So, man, it is a nice day in London, Ontario. I don't know what it's like where you are, but it is a gorgeous day. Okay. Um. So let's talk about half. But yeah, we'll go sort of with a half kneeling groin theme. Um. So if we Hey, tell me if you notice an improvement in the sound quality too. I bought a new mic for you guys so that the sound quality on the Facebook Live videos would be better. So if you notice a difference, give me a thumbs up. If you don't notice a difference, just don't tell me because I had to pay money to buy that thing. So I'd like to think it was money well spent. <laughs> but um, so we can do uh, like a static stretch because remember, those muscle spindles are sensitive to rate of lengthening. So if we try to lengthen really fast, they're gonna say no, 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 and try to contract us. But if we go slowly, we can come out into this nice stretch position. This is a great functional stretch position too. We're up tall, the way we would be on the ice. We've got that one leg extended. We're posted over our other knee. So we can hold this. And um, I read a review article that looked at, um, it was a meta-analysis. So a meta-analysis is basically a researcher takes all the raw data from all these studies that have been done over time and then compiles all that data into sort of a single data set if you will and then reanalyzes it to see because you know they might measure we're comparing the difference between 30 second static stretch and a two minute static stretch and somebody else may have studied a 30 second static stretch and a 60 second static stretch a 10 second <laughs> stretch you know so they almost make it one data set and what came out of that article is that, you know what, 30 seconds is about as good as 60 seconds or 90 seconds. So that's why, that's why you'll see in Shutout Academy, most things are 30 seconds. Sometimes we'll go a little bit longer, um, you know, 45 or 60 seconds, but that's, that's for some specific types of stretching um, and it, almost a little different type of tissue that we're trying to get. So we can then work on Lengthening that muscle. Also like static stretching because it just gives you a little like circle check. Like, hey, how does this feel side to side? See you, Tyler. How does this feel side to side? Oh, you know what? Hey, my right side feels a little tight today. Oh, what? It hasn't been like that before. Okay, I better keep an eye on that. See how it feels later on in the week. And then, you know, it's a way you can get a little um, notice if something isn't quite feeling right. But notice how I'm staying tall. I'm trying to keep my pelvis neutral. I'm feeling a nice stretch here. So then what I can do is um, tap into those Golgi tendon organs and start creating some force in that lengthened position. So remember, those Golgi tendon organs are sensitive to force production. So if, if I just start smashing on it, they, you know, they're probably going to, or when I create the force, they want to make the muscle relax a little bit. Now again, I'm not gonna smash on it, I'm not gonna really quickly do that, but I'm just gonna gradually build force. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to push this foot down into the turf and stay tall. So it really looks like I'm doing nothing, but I'm building, building, building that force, trying to push that foot down and trying to pull this knee in. So then, and then I'll relax. And I'll build that force over about 10 seconds and then I'll relax. And then my Golgi tendon organs might let me get a little bit more length. And then I'll go back in, start building that force, building that force. 
So now what am I doing? Well, I'm developing force in, a le in my end range of motion. So remember when I showed you those um, cross bridges in the sarcomere unit? You know, you can appreciate how here, if I'm in the middle range, uh, so where I have like good cross bridge overlap, it's pretty strong. But when I get out in that lengthened position, and my cross bridges are like that, like that's really weak. So no wonder your body wants to protect you <laughs> when you get out in that range. But if I can create isometric force, and isometric force, I can create maximum muscle contraction isometrically. So I don't need, to, I, can lift, I can produce as much force uh, squatting isometrically as I could lifting as much as I could lift once. I don't need an external load. I can just, you know, push into the wall, push into the floor, whatever. So I'm teaching my body, hey, you know what, I, I get out in that lengthened position and I produce a lot, a lot, a lot of force. It, your body starts to think, yeah, I've been in this neighborhood before. It's actually not that bad. I, we can go there again, okay? And this stuff I, I re really opened my mind to a lot of this type of thinking about mobility was Dr. Andreo Spina. Um, he's, he just, he's forgotten more about the science of it than I feel I'll ever know, but this is what got me sort of thinking about it and thinking about it in terms of those sensory neurons, those, this muscle spindles and Golgi tendon apparatus. So that's, so then that, that's sort of my next step. So I can do some static stretching to just lengthen it out, let the muscle spindles relax, feel that length. Then I can do some contraction that maybe will trigger my Golgi tendon organs to let that muscle relax a little bit. It's not gonna be the reflexive relaxation, but just to let it, when I let go, relax, get a little further, teach my brain, hey, I can produce um, high amounts of force in that lengthened position. But then still, that's not gonna help you on the ice because you know, you're not gonna be out here and be like, okay, I'm gonna produce some force now as I make this save. You know, you're gonna be out and you're just gonna push for it and do the splits by accident and uh, polarity will ensue. So, we're gonna make it a little more dynamic. So now I get to put on my knee pads. Just talk amongst yourselves here for a moment. Um, and wear knee pads when you do this because um, otherwise it's painful. And if it's painful, your muscles are gonna contract to try to protect you. Um, you're not, you need to be nice and sort of relaxed. Now, you're never gonna be careless with this. You're not gonna just, oh, I understand the science and start smashing away at your hips. You know, you always have to pay attention and start easy and everybody is different. So what, you know, feels great for somebody might be exactly the wrong thing for somebody else. If you have a hip impingement and you think, oh, I just need to generate more, you know, isometric force, that's gonna be a big, big mistake. Uh, I just need to get some booties. So I wanna make sure you understand that last bit that I said, stretching, does not fix everything. Uh, you know, if you have a hip impingement that is a true bony hip impingement, you can't stretch that out. So if you start any kind of stretching program and you realize, oh, my flexibility is actually getting worse. I'm actually getting tighter. Number one, you could be just doing something wrong and you're actually triggering these sensory neurons in the wrong way, in a way that's protecting your body. Or if you're doing things the right way, uh, following a properly designed mobility program, and you're getting that, then your body's telling you, no, 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 we are not supposed to go in those positions. So that's something to keep in mind. But so then we go um, to just, I just have a piece of puckboard. So, and, or you can do it on the linoleum floor or whatever you've got. But we're gonna go to lengthening eccentric actions. So I'm gonna be, I can start here, and then I'll, push that out of it. I'll start here and then I'll slowly over a count of like five or six, come out nice and wide again, staying tall. So I'm not gonna crunch down so that I can get further because that doesn't really help me out that much. So I'll come here, I'll use my hands to help pull me 
me back up. Getting a little battery warning. So again, I'm not taking it to the point where it's painful. Uh, I'm just taking it to the point where I feel a really good, strong stretch, but not painful. Um, then I can come out and come back up. Come out, come back up. So I can work that range a little bit. Then what I can do, and again, you've got to be careful, and you've got to progress over this systematically over weeks, uh, months. You know, it's not just like, well, I did this, this, and this, and you know, I'm going to really get my mobility there. It's, it's just like strength training. You have to follow the steps. You can't just magically, you know, do the most advanced stuff and get the biggest benefit. But then you can go a little quicker, boom, and stop and come back up, boom, stop and come back up. So your body gets used to some of that lengthening under speed and it's like, okay, nothing bad happened. We're all right. Now, I'm controlling it. I'm not just like, you know, trying to smash into the split. So you have to control it with your muscles, but start giving those lengthening actions. Um, you know, we can do the same thing for our groins just with kneeling groiners. You know, and then we can boom, 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 and add a little bit more dynamic to it. So, let me just see if I've, oh yeah, and the last thing too was like, and then change your body position too. So, you know, sometimes you'll be over here, or reaching, or this way, you know, because a lot of times too, that's when an injury happens. You know, you've kicked out here, but then the play comes back here, and you try to reach back. So. We could go, we could go here. You know, and get that pattern. We could go here and get that pattern. Then you can make it a little quicker. But again, you have to follow the progression. So it's not. It's not the exercise that's gonna make or break your mobility. It's, it's did I follow that systematic progression to get from here and to capitalize on what those muscle spindles do and then help sort of maybe reset those Golgi tendon organs and then make myself you know, strong and durable in those lengthened positions. Uh, gonna see if I missed. You know what, yeah, I had some stuff on dynamic warm up. <laughs> We're not even going to talk about that today. Um, for, if you're in the Shoutout Academy, I put, I think it's three, three or four brand new dynamic warm-ups in the um, free bonuses section. So you can check that out because that's a, another whole thing before you get on the ice, the dynamic warm-up. So you can go check that out. Uh, if you are not in the Shoutout Academy, um, you can still get access to those. Actually, I have a, a seven-day trial that's one buck. <laughs> so you, you could, I mean, I know people do it. You could go in, uh, download that. Oh, it was four of them. Thanks, David. You could go in and, you know, see them, uh, check them out. And, oh, thanks, Chris. The mic sounds good. Check them out for a buck. Um, just make sure you cancel before the end of the week so that you're not uh, signed up as a regular member. But. Honestly, once you go in and see it, you will probably, you will definitely, if you're motivated enough to do the work, you'll want to stick with it because it works so well. So that's how you can have me design all your mobility, strength, speed, <laughs> warm ups, what to eat, you know, all that jazz is in there. Um, otherwise, that's all I have for you today. On Thursday, we're going to do the aerobic deficit, which is, um, it, we're going to talk about uh, physiologically why. Uh, goalies get into their get, hit their anaerobic threshold earlier than skaters um, with seemingly less um, uh, duration of, of intense activity. So that's what we're going to talk about on Thursday. And then on Saturday, it's going to be the eccentric advantage, which is how we get goalies stronger, uh, more mobile, and more injury resistance, which just seems weird because you often think like, well, if I get stronger, I'm going to lose mobility. And if I have more mobile, then I'm going to be weaker and slower, but uh, not, not at all true. So I hope this helps. I want to just, I know it was a little bit sciencey, and I uh, was a little hesitant, and I didn't know, but it, it's, I mean, trust, this is like, 
I tried to boil it down as basic as I could. And uh, when I was in graduate, like I remember that I studied this stuff for six years. <laughs> when I was in graduate school, I took an entire course just on skeletal muscles. So like the spindles and the Golgi tendon apparatus, like we would spend two months studying those and studying, you know, so I, I tried to boil it down so that you'd be like, oh, that makes sense and help you understand the science that goes into the program design element. It's not just, oh, this exercise and that exercise and we'll put it together and that'll be the workout. It's like, there's actually a system where you can train your body uh, more efficiently to do what you need it to do based on your demands. As, as playing the most demanding position in the most amazing sport, uh, in the world, so it's pretty cool. It's so fun. It's it's like totally my passion to work with you guys. I'm gonna just check if there are a couple questions, and uh, and then I'm gonna let you go. And I'll see you again on Thursday. Um, oh, good, awesome. I'm glad that helped you while you were eating your dinner. How do I get a hard copy of my workbooks? Um, Mike, you can just print them off. Um, I don't even have a hard copy. I don't send anything out by mail. It lets me keep the price down by about 40 to 60% based on where you live. And I'd rather would pass that savings on to the goalies than uh, pass it on to the people that make the print books. But you can just print it out and put it in a binder. That's what the guys in the shutout and girls in the shutout academy, they just print it out, three hole punch it, put it in a binder. Uh, Thanks, Arthur. I appreciate it. Yeah, I'm happy to share, my, share, share what I know and help you guys get better. Okay, that's all I have for you today. If you, yeah, if you want to get everything done, put together, like I designed the programs as we go. I just designed September's program uh, last week. Then check out Shoutout Academy for a buck. Uh, is shoutoutacademy.com. If you'd rather, and some of you have the time and the, you know, you can take a couple seasons to experiment and find your own way, that's totally cool too. Uh, but I hope that this helped you fine tune what you do for your mobility training. Cheers.